We tend to see some patients that are younger without a clear etiology of their pancreatitis. And, uh, you know, frequently they have had a limited workup. And for some reason, one of the workups that we frequently see that they miss to check, it's triacylglyceride levels. So we may be making the diagnosis once the patients have left the hospital. And you'll see triacylglyceride levels that are over a thousand. So when it comes to familial, particularly to familial calomicronemia syndrome, these are patients that will see that they have very elevated triacylglycerides, younger patients, and then we start therapy and they don't respond well to therapy. That's when we start to think that they may have this condition, FCS, and that's when we start to do genetic testing and going for the next level of making the diagnosis. Every time that we, have, that we see these patients, we see them in our multidisciplinary pancreas clinic and we have this actually set up for once a day that you have a clinical pancreatologist like me, we have endocrine involved, we have nutritionists, we have surgeons, all of us working in the same area so the patients can be seen during one visit. Hypertrasiglyceridemia, it's rare, so this is not something that we see all the time. When we have a patient with this diagnosis, we get our lipid experts involved and we'll refer the patients to be managed by them. Uh, when this diagnosis is being thought, you know, our lipidologists are the ones that are doing all the genetic testing and, uh, and taking over the hyperlipidemia, hyperlipidemia you know, uh, particularly hypertriacylglyceride part of the therapy. If you go to college and you start to drink more, yes, that may trigger pancreatitis because now you have not only your own lack of clearance of triacylglycerides, from whatever diet you are, but now you're adding alcohol that it's making a lot of triacylglycerides in your system as well. So the, the, basically what this brings up is a environmental factors and how much they play a role into triggering pancreatitis. I can tell you that in my clinic, I see them both. Younger kids that don't drink, don't smoke, you know, the only risk factor is the high triacylglycerides and yes, you also have the college kids, you know, that they, for the first time, are started to drink or so, they're going to parties, and then they drink more than usual, and that triggers an episode of pancreatitis. So you see them in both, you know, flavors and colors, if you want to call it that way. In this meeting, we're talking about a familial hypercalomacronemia syndrome, FCS, but in my clinic, I do see a lot of patients, also younger or middle-aged, that have genetic mutations not associated to high triacylglycerides that lead to recurrent acute and chronic pancreatitis. So unfortunately, particularly the middle-aged, like you were asking before, that may be in college, they start to develop pancreatitis for whatever reason, and uh, they go to the emergency departments and they're being stamped with the diagnosis of a narcotic seeking or alcoholic and so, when in reality, you know, they have a genetic condition that it's bringing that threshold for the pancreatitis to occur really, really low, and that's why they have pancreatitis. So long answer short, you know, when it comes to genes and etiology for pancreatitis from a genetic mutation, a genetic predisposition, uh, they're rare conditions, but we're seeing them more and more and more and in my clinic, that we have a dedicated pancreas clinic, we see a lot of these patients that are being diagnosed with genetic pancreatitis. No longer idiopathic, no longer alcoholic because they don't even drink. And, um, and, and it's interesting because the incidence, as we're learning more, it's going up and up and up. You know, I think it's important for the uh, caregivers to explain to the patients, you know, what the condition that they have, uh, 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 the implications, particularly the younger ones that, you know, they're being stamped again with the diagnosis of alcoholism or binge drinker. It's not a bad idea to give them a copy of your uh, clinic visit just to have some type of formal documentation, you know, that, that you have a rare condition that it's triggering your your pain and your visit to the emergency department, and it's not that you're looking for narcotics. 
And the other thing is that we have to tell the patients that there's some uh, websites out there that they, can, uh, that they can look for more information, learn more about it, like the FCS Foundation that just created a new website, or the National Pancreas Foundation that also has a website, and there's plenty of uh, information there that can be of great help for the patients and their family members.